How strong are you? No, I don't mean how much you can lift, I mean mentally. Are you able to resist the temptations of the modern world? Mindlessly scrolling through social media, playing hour-long sessions of computer games, eating junk food and snacks. In such a world it is hard to be productive, to live a fulfilling life, to build your dream life. Somehow you are stuck with your problems and don't know how to solve them. Maybe you are even in a constant cycle of ups and downs, not able to get some consistency in your life. We live in a world where we are comfortable and always get distracted, forgetting where we actually wanted to go. In this world, self-discipline is key. So, but why do we need to resist? Why can't we just indulge in these temptations? I think we all have goals in our lives and to get to these goals we need to put in the work. And so how do you put in the work? Through self-discipline. So in this video I'll show you three key elements you need to implement to become unbeatable. And I believe the best way to learn is through stories. So let me tell you mine. A few weeks back I made a video in which I said and what is so, so, so important, don't stop, don't stop solving the problems. Yeah, that's right. I really need to get back to solving the big problems. I'm getting back on track, getting back on my routine and feeling the energy of doing the things. I feel like I, I've lost some energy. But that was again a few weeks back. I know a bit confusing, but it will all make sense. But I think I need to give you a bit more context. So back in August when I made this video in which I said don't stop working, I was working a lot. I am currently building a business and also this YouTube channel and both requires a lot of work. But then a few weeks after this video, I started somehow questioning whether I was on the right path. Is this really what I want in life? Does this business model fit me? Does this lifestyle fit me? And I allowed all these thoughts to rise because I thought maybe there is something true about them. So I started to watch a lot of YouTube videos to find a solution to that. To find maybe a better path. See what other people are doing. And yeah, I don't know, I was searching for the answer to everything. <laughs> But I also worked less and less because why should you keep working if that's not the pa right path anyways, right? And so I fell into a hole, not knowing again what I want in life, where, what do I want to do? Seeing all of those successful people online and thinking I want to build a great life as well, but didn't know how to do that and I didn't put in the work. And this all fed to the downward spiral which I will explain in a second. So the first key element we can learn from this is you need to have a why. If you have a why, everything will become clear. You know why you're waking up in the morning, why you're doing what you're doing, because you have this goal, this vision to work towards. And if you have that, everything will become easier and you won't doubt on the first week if you're doing what you wanted really in life. But in a world where there's seemingly infinite options, it's hard to find your own. You're just one click away from finding everything out about a career path or a lifestyle. And on the one side, this is a gift, but on the other side, it could be very well overwhelming. But as I said, I stopped working, which was a mistake because I got stuck. All this doubt and questioning didn't lead to anything. Maybe I led to this video now, but it didn't lead to finding out if the path is right because I realized the only way to find out if the path you're taking is the right path is to go it and see for yourself, try it. So we get to learning number two. In order to go the path, we need to make a plan. How do you make a plan? You take your big goals and break them down into smaller goals and these into even smaller goals and these into tasks and these tasks you then fill into your daily routine. For that you need a daily routine. I'm currently perfecting my daily routine. For that I'm blocking out everything I do, literally everything, sleep, 
work, of course, eating, relaxing, everything. That way I have these blocks where I just focus on the specific thing I wanted to do. And in this time I'm also cutting out every distraction. And of course I stay nimble, sometimes I change it up. And very important is to observe yourself, find out when are you most productive, when are you tired, when are you creative and then adapt your daily routine accordingly. So build your daily routine, create these work blocks in which you're not being distracted, cut out every distraction, turn off all notifications or put your phone into another room. Just take this block to really focus on the task you're doing. And then afterwards you should have a block where you can relax. Of course you don't have to do this forever, but I think it's a very good way to get to know yourself. And one tip for that, write everything you do into your calendar, that way you can track it. Luckily in this down phase, in this hole, I also journaled a lot. I wrote down all my thoughts and reflected on them. I reflected on the YouTube videos I was watching and the books I was reading. And there was one particular person who changed my perspective on the things and it was Marcus Aurelius, the old Roman emperor and philosopher. And through reading his book and reflecting his thoughts on my life, it became clear to me that what I lacked was self-discipline. So I started working on it and because with this YouTube channel I want to show you what I'm doing and how you can do that too, I started to create this video. I started going out, talking about discipline, talking about where I'm currently at with getting back to work and with motivation and my progress. I even created a nice transition to refer to an old video. And then I created a two weeks plan to ramp up my core habits. And if I follow them, I will get back to being extremely productive. But then something very unexpected happened in my private life, which led to me again doubting everything, questioning if it's the right path. And then the downward spiral got traction again. The downward spiral. How does it work? What do I mean by that? It starts by mindlessly consuming content online. You see all of those people with their perfect lives thinking you want to also build a great life. But instead of working on it, you watch more content to maybe find some tips, to maybe find a magic formula. And also the content makes you feel good and makes you feel that you work on it because you're learning. But after some time you get frustrated, you consume all of that content and think you're working on it, but you're not putting in the work. And because nothing changes, you feel bad. And because you feel bad, you start to watch more content to feel better, which on the one side wastes your time and again, makes you feel bad <laughs> more because you see all of those people. And I think you see where this is going. This is like a spiral which drags you down. You think you're changing something, but in reality, you're just consuming content, being lazy. Because you feel that you're, something is going wrong. You try to watch more because you want to find this solution. But the solution would be just to work on it. So, after two weeks, my plan still looked like this. And at some point, I got just angry and really frustrated. I always fall into these holes. And then I struggle, I really struggle to get back out of it. I crawl out of these holes and I'm getting back on my feet. And then two days later and I fall back into these holes. And I think this is a very good place to really bring home the point how important discipline is. And it doesn't make me angry about them. It makes me angry about myself that I don't have the discipline that I don't have the discipline to stay away from them or at least use them in a healthy way and not waste days and days of my precious life because I feel that it is not good for me. But we all lack discipline. This mother age wasn't planned at all, but it was on purpose. I want you to see my pain and maybe feel it too. Because you need this pain to do something against it. If you don't feel pain, you won't do anything about it. And don't get the wrong impression, it's not like I'm a big addict or not working on my goals, but I could work more on them. I'm pretty hard on myself, I would say. <laughs>
So why am I showing you all of that? I could have just simply gone into the points which I'm implementing to build my self-discipline. But I want you to understand that it is okay to have down phases, to sometimes not be productive, not be very disciplined. But in these phases you shouldn't hate yourself, you shouldn't hate your life. These phases are part of the human experience. Without them life would be meaningless, boring, a good times wouldn't feel good. We as humans we have the capability to control our thoughts, to focus them on a specific goal, even if it's hard to achieve. And so in such down phases don't just accept it. Don't bathe in self-pity, thinking oh everything is so bad. You can change, so do it. But in order to be able to change, you need to accept where you currently are. And I also want you to understand that building self-discipline to build a great life is not a straight line. There will always be ups and downs. But the key is to understand that these phases will go by. And through staying consistent, focusing on your goal, working on yourself, reflecting about yourself, you will come out stronger out of, out of these phases. So now let's get into the juicy part. And now we come into the third part, which is self-reflection. And I think the best way to reflect on yourself is to write. You maybe could also record a video or a voice memo, but I think there is just something beautiful about writing. When you think about the next sentence you want to write, you also see the sentence you wrote before and that way you can identify limiting beliefs and that's very important because you then can reflect on them and find ways how that's maybe not true and you of course can also reflect over your problems over where you currently are in life and like this overall life reflection stuff but there is also another part which is daily reflection every day in the evening i sit down with my journal and write down everything I did today, what I could improve, what I'm grateful for, what, what I'm proud about, what I did great. And then I set goals for the next day. What do I want to do the next day? What do I want to improve the next day? This also gives you some sort of self-accountability because you then reflect every day, have I done what I wanted to do? And all of this also makes me more aware during the day because if I want to do something which I know of is not the something I want to do not not good for me not good for my goals I then reflect on it sometimes I even stop and sit down and journal about it why did I want to do that again and why w what triggered that so the third thing is self-reflection and I got this small bonus tip for you learn how to be strong it's easy to shut out everything out of your life but at some point you will be exposed to it again and then it's good if you have some resistance because there's some chance you will bounce back and then you will be more sensitive to it i think it's better to build up the discipline to say no it's all about your beliefs because for example if you're a smoker don't throw away all cigarettes because you will be exposed to cigarettes at some point again you need to start believe that you're now a non-smoker and as a non-smoker you wouldn't smoke so it's all about believing who you are and being disciplined about who you are. And self-discipline is not about forbidding everything that's funny or stuff like that. It's about focus. It's about focusing on the things that really make you happy, that really makes you feel good on a long-term basis. So I encourage you to start now being more self-disciplined. Say to yourself, I am a person who is building their self-discipline. And as you can see, I'm also at the beginning, so let's go this journey together. And don't forget, there will be always ups and downs. I fell into a hole and I know it will happen again. But the important thing is to focus, to get out of these holes as fast as possible and to come out stronger even. And for that, I think journaling is a very great tool. And if you want to see how journaling changed my life, you should watch this video next. In this video I tried a new style of storytelling, putting my creativity out there and I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching.